What's up, everybody? This is Carmine Davis, and you are watching and listening to The Carmine Davis Show. Okay, what's up, everybody? I'm back after a week. I took a week off because I thought we were going to go on the hiatus, but I didn't end the show like I wanted to, and I kind of, I feel like with all this Diddy stuff going on, we need to follow this, so I'm not going to even really go on a hiatus. I might just stick with it, you know, just kind of keep the show rolling until all this Diddy shit goes on, because this is too good. We follow previous, like, um, acts like R. Kelly, and we stay glued to that, it seems like you're ready. Um, saga, but while all this is going on, we're going to call this the Can't Stop, Won't Stop Saga. Yeah. Come on. Let's go. Uh, don't. Stop. Woo! Yeah. Let's go. But and we're going to keep our, you know, eyes peeled and our ears to the street on Diddy, okay? Um, he's our focus this season. And uh, that's what we're going to do. But before we guys get into the show, make sure you guys subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. I'm doing it for my health child. Uh, make sure you guys um, follow us on socials. Instagram.com slash Carmine Davis. Instagram.com slash Carmine Davis show. Twitter.com slash Carmine Davis. TikTok.com slash at Carmine Davis. All the at Carmine Davis is okay. And we're going to get into it. Okay. Freddie P. From LoveyScott.com, Freddie P. of the band claims Diddy's threats on his life forced him to leave the group. Now, for a second, I have to remember who the hell Freddie P. was. Now, there's a resurgence of making the band. I saw, I recently was up down a rabbit hole, and I saw a interview with another podcaster, blogger, and he was talking to Dominique from making the band three. So there's like a resurgence now that there's a more talk about Diddy. And again, like I said, I feel like Diddy has been sneaking around out loud and doing some crazy shit out loud. And if you go watch Making the Band, all this stuff does not sound too far-fetched. You know what I'm saying? Like, Diddy was kind of charged on that show. And if we watch it now, looking back on things, a lot of things that he said to those girls and those these guys and made them do was foul. And I think a lot of people are tuning into that. And so there's a resurgence of the cast members and their take on what's going on. And right now they're talking to Freddie P. Freddie P., a former member of the band, claims that he once made a threat to his life during a heated exchange in the studio. Okay, in a recent conversation with The Art of Dialogue, Freddie reflected on a time he and Diddy had a heated conversation that led to the latter making an insane threat. According to Freddie, Diddy told him he had enough power to buy the entire block the Florida rapper lived on and would cut off the electricity, claiming anyone who stepped on out onto the street would get killed. One day I was wa- wa- Damn. I've said some crazy shit. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm sorry, but I've said some crazy things, but that was very creative. Okay, one day I was waking up and I was in the mood. I'm... I was in a mood. I'm in the studio. I'm snapping or whatever. I didn't even want to be fucked with, Freddie recalled. You know, when you're around a bunch of goofies and you're a street nigga, sometimes you don't want to be around the nerds. So I'm in that bitch. I'm just frustrated with a lot of shit going on. I feel him on that one, honey. As a street bitch. <laughs> he continued. Anyway, we get into the situation. We in front of everybody. Nigga like, man, what you think about it or something. He was like, nigga, I'll buy every house on your block. Shut every light off in that bitch. And every time you come out that bitch, you'll get popped. When he tell you some shit like that, you got to picture him purchasing every house. You go into picture every light going off and that shit silenced me. Freddie added that Diddy's bold statement fueled his decision to lead a band and not participate in anything the group was associated with, including the Chappelle Show's episode where Dave Chappelle and members of the group parodied the show. What Diddy told Freddie that night got him so bothered that he even contemplated killing the mogul. I was trying to take his ass out, Freddie admitted. Me and my dog, God rest his soul, was we had a G-Wagon and had his, <laughs> had his little tutus. I had a little pistol on me or whatever. I had the Mac or whatever, and we were waiting for his pussy ass to come out. Freddie isn't the only the band member who was who has spoken out against his former boss. Ines spoke about Diddy's legal issues on an episode of the directed of the directed by CEO Nathis podcast, where he said all the controversy surrounding the embattled music executive producer is a part of a smear campaign. It's a smear campaign, he said. That's what ha- was happening with Pub. It's a smear campaign and that they usually do 
is they go to your personal habits. They start attacking your personal habits, your girlfriends, your exes. Then they start try to find something to attack you through those vessels. But I mean, it's a smear campaign in the sense of there's a lot that they're smearing with. Like, these are facts. These are things that he said. These are things that he did, allegedly. Like, he went up to this motherfucker and said, and I believe him. I believe him. I will buy your. I will buy all that shit and turn and and kill everybody that come out that motherfucker. And I mean, like in in reality, like thinking back to the time and where he was from, Freddie P. I don't remember him, but now I remember him. You know, I didn't remember him. He wasn't someone that was in the front of my mind when it comes to the band. I think I only think about Sarah Stokes and Ness. I think that's the only people that I remember. But jogging my memory because I was a baby watching the show now when people were watching Nickelodeon and Disney I was watching making the band so just to put that out there but somebody saying something like that to you is crazy and if you like that's all he knows I remember he was really really about his hood if you hood nigga you love your your family you love he that's a threat to his family his friends his childhood so I mean I could see him wanting to pop them, you know? And I'm sure a lot of people probably have felt the same way. If they could touch Diddy, they would. And because they couldn't at the time doesn't mean that he wasn't somebody that should have been touched. You know, like, not saying that Diddy deserves to die, but the things, he threatened them people. And we all get heated and we say crazy things. I've said some crazy things in a heated discussion, child. Um, but I can't, I'll tell you I meant what I said. Just, I still stand on a lot of it. I meant what I said about a lot of people. Absolutely. I will do it. And if they came back to me, it is what it is. It's not a smear campaign. That's something that I said. So thinking to what Diddy said to, or what Freddie P is saying that Diddy said, uh, is kin to what we're, we're finding out that he's actually doing. Leave a comment below if you understand what I'm talking about or if you think this is a smear campaign. I don't think it's a smear campaign. I think it's just people finally able to come out and say what they want to say and what they've kind of been saying the whole time. And we're going to move on to the next hot topic. Before we do, make sure you guys subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. I don't do it for my health. I don't do it for my health. You know, make sure you guys uh, follow us on socials. Instagram.com slash Carmine Davis. Instagram.com slash Carmine Davis Show. Instagram, I mean, Twitter.com slash Carmine Davis. TikTok.com slash Carmine Davis. And um, I'm sorry, that's the bells. I don't know what the hell they're doing. But get into all that tea from that. Follow us on our socials. And we're moving on to the next hot topic. Okay, from lovelyscott.com. Say what now? Ex-assistant principal faces felony charges for ignoring warning after warning about armed six-year-old shooter. Richneck Elementary School teacher Abby Swerner was in the middle of teaching her first grade class on January 6, 2023, when a six-year-old student who had brought a gun to school opened fire and shot her. Lord, the special grand jury investigating the January 6, 2023 shooting of Richneck Elementary School has concluded its investigation, releasing a public report and charging former assistant principal Ebony Parker with eight counts of felony child ne neglect, one count of for each of the eight bullets that endangered uh, all the students in Miss Abigail Warner's first grade classroom. The special grand jury investigating the January the 6th, 2023 shooting at Rich Neck Elementary School has concluded its investigation, releasing a public report and charging former assistant principal Ebony Parker with eight counts of felony child neglect, one count for each of the eight bullets that endangered all the students in Miss Abigail Warner's first grade, first grade classroom. The grand special, uh, the special grand jury's report catalogs security and administrative failures by Newport News Public Schools, and it makes recommendation for charge changes to protect students. Um, in releasing the special grand jury's report, we acknowledge the harm inflicted on all the children in Ms. Zwerner's classroom that day, said Commonwealth's attorney Howard Gwynn. Uh, we also acknowledge the special grand jury's recommendation for substantial changes to protect students going forward and note that the school district, now led by Superintendent Dr. Michelle Mitchell, has already started implementing additional safety measures. We thank the members of the special grand jury 
for their diligent service. The special grand jury consisted of 11 members, each a citizen of Newport News. It was impaneled on September 11, 2023, to investigate the shooting of Rich Neck Elementary School. The special grand jury was impaneled at the request of Commonwealth's attorney Howard Gwynn under Virginia Code 19.2206A3. They subpoenaed records and heard testimonies from 19 witnesses, including some families whose children witnessed the shooting, school faculty and staff members, district administrators, and law enforcement. They also reviewed evidence, including surveillance videos, body-worn camera footage, and records subpoenaed from the school administration. Consistent with the Virginia, Virginia Code, Section 19-213, the grand jury wrote and filed their report. The culmination, the culmination of their work included charging former assistant principal Ebony Parker with eight counts of felony child neglect, two, issuing a public report of their findings and recommendations, and three, recommending further investigating um, investigation into the failures of maintaining and providing school records to law enforcement. Child neglect is defined by Virginia Code 18.2371B, and it carries a potential sentence of up to five years in prison for each count. So if you do the math, five times eight, right? Um, consistent with the recommendation from the report, this office will continue investigating whether individuals who worked for the school system obstructed justice. They, the charges related to the assistant principal, Ebony Parker, are now pending matters, and the office will not comment on, comment on the facts or evidence to be presented in that case. Lord, that is crazy. First grade, a shooting. And it's so crazy, like, this is just a casual thing to us now. First graders are shooting up schools. And it's such a hard place right now to be in power. You know what I'm saying? But I'm all about holding people in, in power. If you choose to step into that position, any kind of power, it's not some fly-by-night position. When you choose to be in power in times like these, you make a choice to move in the direction of safety for everybody that you lead. Like, you have to take care of the people if you choose to lead the people. And these are babies. Having any inclination that there might be someone with a gun uh, access to a gun, they're bringing a gun, flashing a gun, or anything like that, or any kind of safe harming in the working environment or school, scholastic environment, like all those things, and just completely just being like, that has nothing to do with me, I'm going home. These are babies. These are babies. This is sick. We're going to keep an eye out on this. Lord, praying for them and praying for everybody. This, this is crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy time. I said this time and time again. Lock them guns up. It's not even funny anymore. Like, this is just getting way out of hand. Way out of hand. Prayers for everybody involved with Rich, Rich, um, Rich Nick Elementary School. Um, everybody is just in the middle of a school shooting. I feel like as I speak, there's a school shooting right now. And that is insane. That's insane. Raising kids in times like these. And then the fact that we're putting people in power who can just not care about the people involved or do what they feel like is best for them at all times. Like, <sighs> that's pretty heavy. Um, we're going on to the next hot topic, but make sure you guys subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. Um, uh, follow us on socials, Instagram.com slash Carmine Davis, Instagram.com slash Carmine Davis Show, TikTok.com slash Carmine Davis, uh, Facebook.com slash Carmine Davis, all the at Carmine Davis, okay? And um, we're going to the next hot topic. Leave a comment below before we do. Um, if you guys feel some type of way about gun reform, uh, it's first graders. First graders, what can you say to that? Um, and the next hot topic from lovebyscott.com. Kanye West explains why he's dissing Drake again despite their recent reconciliation. Kanye West weighed in on the simmering feud between Drake, J. Cole, and Kendrick Lamar. I'm kind of tired of this, honestly, but... Let's talk about it. We'll probably never know if Kanye West was asked to insert himself in the Kendrick Lamar and Drake beef or if it was his own violation. Um, volition. 
Either way, he seems to think there's truth or to both narratives, as he explained during a recent interview on Justin LaBoy's podcast, The Download. For those unaware, the Chicago artist premiered his remix to Like That on the show following some leaks and previews from Adam 22 that initially spread like wildfire on social media. When he played and later released the CQ version, though, along with Metro Boomin's Blessing, folks really knew what he was getting into it. However, a a lot of folks brought up that Ye and Juicy had already made up it, with their Larry Hoover benefit concert in 2021, something that LaBoy asked his guests about. Y'all did the Hoover concert together, right? He told Kanye West. Me and the rest of the world thought y'all were back cool. What happened after that? If it cuts Drake's soul, he responded. It's like he signed his soul to the devil to not be cool with me. This is his job to go against God and that cuts his soul. Uh, elsewhere during the interview, the controversial designer also offered his own perspective on what made him want to do the Like That remix. Uh, and while it's an unconfirmed account, it's probably as much as we'll get about it. He said that Future was the one who hit him up to do the verse and that folks in the rap game are energized by these shots at the OVO mogul. Everybody is very, very excited about the elimination of Drake, Kanye West expressed on the download. Um, in addition, he also claimed that Sir Lucian Grange, Grange, Sir Lucius Grange, Sir Lucian Grange, I feel like I should know that, the head of UMG is the boy's father due to the massive deal that they inked. Um, Drake has a rich baby daddy named Lucian <laughs> in Universal. The Vultures creator stated, he's like, my my daddy got it. My daddy controlled the spins. My daddy got the DSPs. Drake has a rich baby daddy named Lucian. <laughs> he also said that Grange is a puppet of people who control the banks in Africa. <laughs> what the fuck is he talking about? What's crazy, though, is I believe him. I said this time and time again. Drake is a bad bitch, right? And he is the queen of female rap. And if you're going to spit right now, you got to go against the queen. So I get where he's coming from about everybody is energized. And, you know, Drake seems like she's just sitting up on her throne. You know what I'm saying? I'm bothered, pretty and I'm bothered. And they're coming for him. And it's energizing. I think it's a hater kind of mentality. But, you know, I mean... Like you said, Drake's got a, a cute little daddy and he's he thinks that he's got it good. Okay, well, you're going to have to come and rap. I think that's what Kanye is trying to say. You're going to have to come and spit, sister. Like, we rapping. You know, I'm also sewing up clothes, but bitch, I put this needle and thread down and, and get in that booth. Bitch, you know, take your barrettes out and come and see the girls. Like, we looking for you. Ain't nobody going to jump you. Not for real. We just want to talk. And that's what Kanye is giving. Like, that's what I think that they are giving. Rick Ross, all of them. We want to talk about your nose. You know what I'm saying? I think everybody done got energized from this, this static in the air, you know, with the queens of rap. You know, Nikki, Megan, they can't handle them. So they coming for Drake. Leave a comment below if you understand where I'm coming from. You know, I mean, it is what it is. I, that's what it sounds like to me. Drake controls the spins. You know, he's got a rich baby daddy. I feel him. Me, you know. Okay, and then now they want to talk that shit. Come on out. We want to play. Leave a comment below if you understand where I'm coming from with the whole Yeezy versus Drake versus Kendrick versus Future versus, versus Rick. I don't know. They all, the girls are fighting. And I like it. But I really want to see, you know, Drake has been sitting pretty. I want to see if Drake really... And he's a Scorpio. You know. I love Drake, though. I love I love that he just, you know, gets the girls right up. I love it. I love it. That's one of my things I, I love about him. I like him a little more now. But only because I, I respect a bad bitch. I'm a bad bitch. I see you, girl. But that's the show. I love you guys. I'm going to tune in with you guys next week, all right? I love y'all. Bye.